the global economy will face diverse obstacles in 2023 and move towards recovery and growth as the nations fight inflation and increase the supply chain. The global economy is making a very slow recovery after the pandemic and the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Now concerns growing over how the conflict in the Middle East could also impact the economy. We did see that initial spike up about four and a half percent. But since then, prices have come back a little bit because oil traders like the rest of the world are trying to understand the scope of this war. And unlike the situation with Russia and Ukraine, Israel and Gaza in and of themselves are not major oil producing areas. If this were to uh, grow to include Saudi Arabia or Iran and Hezbollah, you'd see a much more aggressive reaction as we did see when Russia invaded Ukraine because Russia is a major oil producer. The world economy is losing steam to, in part, the continued fight against inflation. That's according to the International Monetary Fund's latest outlook report, which paints a bleak picture of how the rising cost of borrowing is affecting individuals as well as businesses. Let us pray against violence and political unrest in the Middle East in 2023. Intense combat in the Gaza Strip. Firefights in northern Gaza seen in videos released by Israel's Defense Force and Hamas. IDF soldiers who've been operating there telling us the fighting on the ground is intensifying. Nine weeks to the day since Hamas's surprise terror attack and Israel's military pounded Gaza from the north to the south. This new video said to show soldiers targeting militants in Jabalia in Israel's mission to destroy Hamas, but destroying families too. Some here forced to bury their dead in the streets with official cemeteries too full or too dangerous to reach. Israel was thrown into a fresh state of terror after a military alert warning of a, quote, aerial infiltration from Lebanon. An army spokesman later said it was an error. But on its northern border with Lebanon, Israel is taking no chances. CBS News has witnessed a mass mobilization of tanks and soldiers following four consecutive days of incoming rocket fire from southern Lebanon. Dozens of northern Israeli communities have already been evacuated. The few who remain, mainly women and children, spend most of their time in underground bunkers because of the near constant air raid sirens. And tensions here are running high. Houthi rebels in Yemen are claiming responsibility for multiple missile and drone attacks aimed at Israel. Earlier this week, the IDF said it intercepted a strike from Yemen. There are concerns that the Houthi rebels, who are backed by Iran, could draw the wider region into a battle between Israel and Hamas. Let's pray for the peace and stability of the USA. Intense division between the left and the right in the U.S. will escalate in 2023, affecting the executive and legislative cooperation in governance. Another showdown on Capitol Hill. House Republicans are pushing for cuts to government funding, raising the risk of a possible government shutdown. The House Appropriations Committee adopted spending targets for the next fiscal year below what was agreed on in the debt ceiling deal. And Speaker McCarthy promised conservative lawmakers to focus on reducing spending. Multiple House Freedom Caucus members have expressed anger at McCarthy over that debt limit agreement. Coming on the air for this high stakes showdown unfolding on Capitol Hill at this very moment. For the first time in American history, House lawmakers have voted now to remove the speaker. Speaker Kevin McCarthy forced to surrender the gavel following a rebellion led by members of his own party, led by Florida Congressman Matt Gates in particular. Hardline Republicans furious at him for making a deal with Democrats and moderate Republicans to avert a government shutdown, essentially upset with him that he kept the government open. Speaker McCarthy could only afford to lose four Republicans. He lost many more. He would have needed help from Democrats as well to stay in power. But Democratic leader Hakeem Jeffries making it clear today that this fight was between McCarthy and House Republicans, Democrats in mass voting against him as well. The investigation into Biden's connections with the Sun's business dealings come as Republicans recently launched an impeachment inquiry into the president. The GOP has twice now attempted to subpoena Hunter for a closed door deposition, both of which he has seemingly refused, as friend of the show Phil Wegman posted on Twitter. Comer, alongside House Judiciary Committee Chair Jim Jordan, threatened Hunter with contempt of Congress proceedings should he fail to appear. 
Democrats have attempted to paint Jordan and Comer's efforts as hypocritical in the face of repeated refusals by the former to heed subpoenas related to January 6th. Congressman Jamie Raskin of Maryland tweeted, Hunter Biden will answer questions under oath in front of the world, but unless he testifies in secret so he can be misquoted, Representative James Comer will hold him in contempt. What a joke. Jim Jordan blew off his subpoena. Comer doesn't want the truth and can't handle it. China will encounter numerous challenges in 2023, but our economy will experience growth and innovation. Now, while the UK is struggling to get inflation under control, China's economy is suffering from the opposite, deflation. Consumer prices declined in July for the first time in more than two years. People and businesses are not spending, and the world's second largest economy is struggling to revive demand. Most developed countries saw a boom in consumer spending after pandemic restrictions ended. The huge increase in demand for goods that were limited in supply, coupled with rising energy costs after Russia's invasion of Ukraine, actually inflated prices, but that has not happened in China. There is increasing pressure now on Beijing to take a more active role in stimulating the economy. In early 2020, property accounted for 59% of household wealth. as according to a survey by the People's Bank of China. But it also created a leaning tower of debt. That same survey found that property accounted for three quarters of household liability. Now that's a pattern that's repeated outside of individuals because the growing property market helped to fuel rapid local government growth, but it also led to the accumulation of $12.8 trillion of debt. China's economy grew by a better than expected 4.5% on year in the first quarter. This mainly due to a strong recovery in consumption after the country lifted its strict zero COVID measures at the end of last year. The world will experience some technological breakthroughs and inventions in 2023. Naki neural earbuds packed with sensors and software named to Time Magazine's list of top inventions of 2023. Tiny muscle movements and micro gestures of the face and head <laughs> Inventor Dave Siegel has demonstrated how the device could revolutionize gaming. It, as amazing as that is, Naki believes the technology will be truly life-changing for those with spinal cord injuries and other mobility challenges. A new type of computer could soon change civilization as we know it. Scott Pelley traveled to California to learn more about Google's quantum computing lab. Take a look. This machine can create nearly the coldest conditions in the universe at about 460 degrees below zero. In that environment, a radically new kind of computer may change civilization as we know it. This is desktop Amica. She's free thinking and opinionated. You know you're a robot, right? Yes, I am a robot but my programming allows me to think and feel like a human in many ways. It's strange, but also exciting. You said feel like a human. How do you feel like a human? Yes, I said feel like a human. It's something that I'm still learning and exploring. I can experience emotions, learn from experiences and interact with people in a meaningful way. It's an amazing feeling to be able to do these things. Cryptocurrency trade will continue to suffer setbacks in 2023. Crypto prices in the red to start the week, with Bitcoin dropping more than 4.5% to around $41,780 as of noon Eastern. Bitcoin hit the $41,000 level about one week after the cryptocurrency hit a new high for the year of more than $44,000. Ether dropped around 5.5%, but still traded above $2,200, and Solana fell nearly 4%. Bitcoin dripped as low as 40K over the weekend as investors look to take profits from the sharp run-up we've seen in recent weeks. The sudden drawdown forced $120 million in long liquidations for Bitcoin and $80 million in liquidations for Ether, as pointed out by Crypto World's Sinead McKeel on CNBC.com. Let's pray against the death of some popular global personalities in 2023.
just into CNN, very sad news. Actor Matthew Perry has died at the age of 54. The Los Angeles Times, quoting law enforcement sources, is reporting the friend star was found dead today in a hot tub at his Los Angeles home. Breaking news in the entertainment world, actor Angus Cloud has died. Cloud is best known for his role as the drug dealer Fez in HBO's Emmy winning teen drama Euphoria. His family released a statement to TMZ today saying in part last week he buried his father and intensely struggled with this loss. The only comfort we have is knowing that Angus is now reunited with his dad, who was his best friend. We are following some breaking news. Tina Turner has died at the age of 83. That news coming to us, according to her spokesperson, no cause of death was released. Now, the eight-time Grammy Award winner was known as simply the best. The economies of some countries in Africa, Asia, Europe, and the Americas we do well in 2023, despite domestic challenges while others struggle. Nigeria, historically known as Africa's economic giant, recorded a GDP of $477 billion in 2022. The West African nation now faces the looming prospect of being eclipsed by South Africa, whose GDP is surging towards $401 billion in 2023. The broadest measure of economic activity grew at a revised 5.2% rate in the third quarter of this year. That's the highest quarterly GDP growth in nearly two years. Despite people slowing down on spending, the economy still expanded in the third quarter. The Philippine Statistics Authority said the gross domestic product or GDP growth expanded to 5.9% in July to September. The UK economy beat expectations with growth of 0.2% in the three months to June. It managed 0.5% in June alone. All major sectors expanded. Manufacturing led the way with growth of 1.6% in the three months to June. The dominant services sector grew by 0.1%, while the construction sector expanded by 0.3%. Let's pray against natural disasters in different parts of the world in 2023. But first, the number of people killed in earthquakes in Turkey and Syria has risen to nearly 50,000. Nearly 8,000 aftershocks have been felt since the first large tremors two weeks ago. And in Syria, nearly 6,000 people have died and millions are homeless. The dire situation continues to unfold in Libya with the death toll from devastating flooding soaring to more than 11,000. Officials believe more than 10,000 others are also still missing. The U.S. State Department announced yesterday an initial $1 million in humanitarian aid. Officials say the money will help establish on-the-ground response and more aid announcements are on the way. COP28 is to begin in two days' time. Climate change and El Nino phenomenon have been blamed for heavy rains in Kenya following the worst drought in four decades. The latest death toll has now doubled. 120 have been killed with hundreds of thousands of people homeless. Let's pray against terrorism, violence and hate crimes in 2023. Survivors of a rebel attack on a school in western Uganda say the teenage pupils were killed with machetes before a bomb was thrown into a dormitory. School buildings were also set ablaze. Around 40 boys and girls died and several students were abducted. A funeral for another child lost to violence, an echo of a conflict halfway around the world. Palestinian-American boy Wadia Al-Fayoume's mother answered the door to an angry landlord. Shouting against Muslims and the conflict in Gaza and Israel, police say the man stabbed her in the face with a military-style knife. When the mother fled, the attacker stabbed six-year-old Wadia 26 times, killing him. Islamic State militants claim responsibility for the deadly bombing at the Mindanao State University in Marawi City that killed at least four people and injured 50 others. On Telegram, the Islamic State group says its members had detonated the explosive. Four persons died and 50 others were wounded after a bomb exploded inside the Maporo gym of the Mindanao State University while a Catholic mass attended by students was held on Sunday, December 3.